I now have a relatively solid base designed for the bionic hand, but there's still a lot to do. You guys might have noticed that my upload schedule has been a bit less consistent lately, and that's because, for personal reasons, I'm going to need to devote a lot more time to a traditional full-time employment job. So, for the time being, my output is going to slow down and be quite inconsistent and unpredictable. Um, but thankfully, I have a whole lot of my bionic hand completed, and I want to take this opportunity to try and make this project as accessible and open source as possible by getting everything on GitHub, and also later in the video, I'm going to go over everything that needs doing. Um, so this project should be really easy for anyone interested to just pick up and have a go at, experiment with and do whatever you like with. So first of all, I've fixed most of the issues that I found in the last video. Uh, they were mostly just minor oversights, but the biggest thing I was unhappy about was the thumbs CMC mechanism. Now, as this project has been designed to be accessible, it's meant that up until this point I've only used very easy to acquire components and I've stuck to either direct drive or servo actuation or cable mechanisms. The decision to use this mechanism for the thumb represents a kind of split in the design decision making because it is a little bit harder to acquire some of these components. But without using a mechanism like this, it will be very difficult to have all the inputs and outputs of the joint stay stationary. I've uploaded the old version of the mechanism too, so if you think you could make it work with that initial design, then feel free to take the files and do what you will with them. So with the new thumb mechanism, the main actuator is this RS Pro DC gear motor, which, being 6 volts, can happily be used in the place of an MG996R's servo motor. The design transmits the rotation using spare gears into a worm drive, which drives a worm wheel to produce the flexion slash extension motion of the thumb. I also use a cable mechanism to control the other axis of motion. It would have been pretty cool to use an integrated DC motor with this axis too in the same way, but I don't think I would have had the space in the design. Up until now I've been prototyping these very tiny and precise parts on my SLA printer, but I've also tried using some of Matahacker's PTFE, and it looks like it can handle the intricate parts no problem. I'd be interested to try out the metacarpal motors on an FDM printer, but I think ideally I'd need dissolvable supports, which I don't have access to right now. If you want to try out any of Matahacker's filament, check the description and I have an affiliate link, so it'd really help me out if you happen to buy anything through there. Now, in order to take angle readings from the worm and wheel section of the design, I went with a separate gear train which comes off the main one and turns a gear specifically designed to plug into one of my potentiometers. It's fine for this gear to be printed because it doesn't bear a load. I've had a chance to test the second through fifth lateral MCP joints to see how well they can work together. As I mentioned before, they use Corona DS939MG servos, which make it very quiet and smooth compared with the MG90Ss I've been using for other stuff. They seem to be almost reliable, and they seem to have pretty decent torque, so I'd say I'm quite happy with them at this stage. When it comes time to think about wire management, which I intend to have going through some shell components, it's going to need a relatively long length of free PTFE tubing to allow it enough flexibility, so the design of the shell may need to look something like this. So now I'm going to talk about the hand overall, and hopefully I can make it very clear what needs to be done moving forwards. In general, all the subsystems are working reasonably well, and the next step should be to build a prototype of this mechanical frame, correcting the issues where possible. When a robust mechanical frame has been made, it will then be possible to start experimenting with the control and programming. So let's go over all the subsystems and what needs to change. I'm going to give them a rating as a percentage which represents roughly how ready for a final prototype the parts are. So the IP joints first of all. I'm giving them an 80% for how they were working in PLA, but I haven't tested them extensively in SLA. In order to improve the design, first off I might prefer a more robust fixing method where I've used wire to hold them together, but it still remains a very cheap and easy option. There's quite a bit of friction on some of the pulleys, um, but this really depends on the material choice, so it might be a good idea to just print these pulleys in PTFE or some other FDM printable material, because I do think that SLA leaves quite a rough surface. It does seem to be producing a little bit too much friction in these joints. I think maybe it might be an idea to rethink the choice of bearings in the design. Um, and finally, obviously, wire management is a, a big issue at the minute. 
but as I've mentioned, I want this to be part of the shell components. Also note that some of the linkage pieces I've experimented with in the fingers don't leave enough space for the cables to exit through, but it does depend on the size of the cables that you're using. In my most recent prototype, I used some Tanigi 30 AWG silicone wire from Hobby King on the recommendation of someone in the comments, so thanks very much for that. It seems to work really well. Now, moving on to the MCP joints, I would say they're about 80% working in flexion slash extension, and that's because the flexion and extension movement is essentially the same as the IP joints, so the same issues apply. As for the lateral motion, I'm giving it a 60%, maybe 70%. It's because they're just the very small scale of the components in the server mean that the construction can be quite unreliable. It's partly to do with the 3D printing setup on the SLA printer, but it's also due to things like the height of the motor pinion and difficulty holding the rods in place. I would prefer a better way to join the two halves of the MCP adapter that doesn't involve so many screws, and again, wire management is always going to be an issue until we have that uh, until we have the shell sorted out. As for the 4th and 5th CMC joints, which is the flexion of the palm, I would say it's about 80% working. Um, the gear train appears to work fine, um, I'm just a little bit unhappy about, about some of the stabilising linkages. They just need to be a little bit more secure, so they might need some minor adjustments. Looking now at the 1st CMC joint, which is the CMC of the thumb, um, I'm going to say it's 50% working because I'm 50-50 on which mechanism design to choose. I have two possibilities and I've shown them both to work. The pure cable mechanism is a big pain due to the exit wires moving about and the WEM wheel works well but there's a big issue with the joining of the WEM drive to one of the spare gears which will become worse under loads and the WEM drive option is also a big pain for people who don't have easy access to all of the right parts. And then looking at the wrist I would say that's 90% working, there's pretty much no issues with it as it is really simple, it just needs a way to attach to a theoretical forearm which will contain all the actuators. Um, and I might prefer it if it could be made slightly smaller, but as mentioned previously, I might prefer to use a totally different wrist mechanism eventually anyway. So as I mentioned, it is going to be very difficult for me to get around to building this prototype for the time being. Um, so check the description where you'll find everything on my GitHub page, and feel free to do whatever you like with the files as long as I'm attributed in some way. Just a quick note on the files on the GitHub page, there is a big assembly which looks like it has everything in there, but be careful because the IP joints in this design are actually just placeholders. So I don't have a definitive version of the IP joints because I've experimented with a lot of slight variations. So look at the actual IP joint assembly file. Other than that, pretty much everything else is contained within the overall assembly file, but please look through all of the files and make sure you really understand it all and are confident with it before you go out and spend a load of money on printing resin and parts. If you've been wanting to have a go at this project and you've been waiting for me to finish the designs, I would say that now is the time for you to download the files and have a look around and see if you might like to have a crack at it. Um, because as I mentioned, the upload schedule is going to get a lot less consistent and a lot less predictable. So best of luck to anyone who decides to have a look at the files and have a little experiment. Um, the next step needs to be, as I mentioned, to get a full prototype working of the hand and use it to develop a control glove and then redesign the hand to work with the shell components and whatnot. As always, a very big thank you to my patrons and thank you to everyone watching these videos and I'll see you all in the next video.